Okay, so today's cook, we're going to be doing a rotisserie chicken tikka on the Kamado Joe Big Joe with the Jotisserie. So we've got our setup here, bottom vent fully open, top vent fully open. You'll see here, I've set up our charcoal. We don't need a full firebox, just, just enough to get it going. It's only going to cook for a couple of hours and we want most of the charcoal lit for most of the time. So we've got this in here couple of fire starters. You can see I've positioned the fire starters sort of underneath some of the uh, coals. That way the flames and the, the heat radiating upwards from, from the fire starters will directly get some of the coals lit. So once these burn out we'll sort of move around the coals a bit so we can get the right amount of coals required for the heat required um, in the right places so um, we're going to put a little tiny chunk of olive smoke wood in there so it's got that sitting up there to heat up so give this about 10 minutes and then we'll move the coals around and shut the lid and get prepared for uh, uh, cooking our, our chicken tikka okay so <clears throat> our fire starters have gone out and we've got our bottom bits of charcoal lit so we'll just we'll just let that continue to light up a bit more um, I don't want to close the lid yet happy for a fair bit of air to get into this fire um, so at the end of the day we're aiming for about 180 Celsius 350 Fahrenheit for this cook so it's a sort of a roasting temperature uh, more more than a, a low and slow and um, I'll position the charcoal so there's a little bit underneath the the direct cooking area um, where the the chickens turning on the rotisserie uh, and that way you know a lot of that marinade and any of the juices that come out of the chickens just gonna fall down on that charcoal and um, sort of vaporize and add to a lot of the flavor and get a bit of char uh, developing like the the uh, Kamado style cookers are probably one of the closest style cookers to resemble an actual Indian tandoor which is um, you know traditionally what you see a lot of the Indian food cooked in it's a charcoal based uh, ceramic style cooker um, just of a very sort of different design so um, yeah we'll uh, now we'll go and um, put some chicken on this uh, rotisserie okay so um, we've had our chicken tikka here. This has been marinating for over 24 hours. Special shout out to uh, Pitmaster X, one of my favourite YouTube channels. I uh, originally saw this recipe uh, on his channel and i got to say, like, I, I loved it straight away. A couple of little modifications to it here. Um, for example, I've added some Kashmiri chilli powder, which is a, um, a mild chilli powder but uh, it's got a lot of intense colour because I really like that nice red, red orangey um, tandoori colour with the chicken. So I'm just going to show you how I place this on the skewer. Now it does get a bit messy. Uh, we get our whole uh, chicken breast here. So this is a trimmed, uh, sorry, chicken thigh. We've got a whole trimmed chicken thigh. I like to just fold it over and slide it straight on. So um, we just repeat that process. Uh, until we've got basically a full rotisserie skewer here. Now, I originally started off by placing this in, in place on the Big Joe and looking at where that last, um, I guess, little spike here uh, fit. This is uh, set so it's going to basically have the meat over the top of the uh, cooking area for most of the time. Uh, and then we just start sliding these on. I'm doing two kilos of chicken thigh here because I want to have um, you know, a good amount for dinner tonight. But this is the kind of thing that just gets better the more you reheat it. And you know, you can have that uh, for leftovers throughout the week. I've just got a little bit of a dangly bit here, so I'm just gonna spike that onto the spike. And uh, you know, anything that's sort of like loose or uh, that's gonna dangle uh, is probably just going to get cooked a little bit more than than the bulk of the chicken, but that's okay. You know, it's going to be a bit crunchier. It's going to get some really nice char on it. Uh, it's not the end of the world. It's it's rarely going to ever really burn to the point of anything being, you know, inedible. 
in this style of cooking. Like it's not going to be that hot. It's not really direct heat. The the heat source still isn't that close um, to the to the chicken. So at the end of the day, you know, if you've got some loose dangly bits, that's fine. What we're going to do with most of this chicken is actually once we take it off, I'm actually going to make some tandoori chicken wraps with it. Um, you could you could serve it as uh, just straight chicken tikka with your accompaniments and some nice cooked rice or, or anything you want but we're going to turn this into wraps and we're going to have dinners tonight and lunch for the rest of the week so yeah I'll leave you there I'm going to clean up this spike here and as soon as our charcoal is ready and we're at our cooking temp we're going to throw this straight onto the grill so where we're at now it's not that far from uh, where we were before, maybe only about 10 minutes, but a fair bit more of the charcoal has been lit. I've just manipulated it so uh, more of it's in towards the center of the grill and put a bit of unlit stuff on top of it. So what we're actually going to do now is we're going to shut the lid. I don't want it to get too out of control. I'm just going to shut the lid, make sure that it starts to hit, you know, our desired 180-200. Um, without getting too crazy and then we'll bring in the rotisserie and get it going so I've still got that bottom vent fully open still got that top vent fully open so we'll check back in um, you know, maybe about 10 minutes and I reckon it's gonna be up to temp and we're gonna throw this bad boy on okay so we're back here we got perfect temp vents fully open I'm just gonna leave that fully open our bottom vent uh, is fully open but I'm just gonna shut that back just so we don't get too much oxygen in and it doesn't creep up too high so if you look at our coal bed that we've got going there it's nice we've got some flames I'm gonna grab this chunk of uh, beautiful olive wood here chuck that in Ooh. It was actually a little bit hotter than I expected, but that's alright. Preheated is good. We just want to get a little bit of smoke on, not too much, because it is chicken, and it's going to take up smoke really easily. Um, so, you know, going to put that on there. We, you know, your best smoke you get is when it's pre-warmed wood on a really hot bed of coals, really hot fire. So, we're just going to get our, um, our rotisserie set up here. I'm going to pop that in and um, just sit it in place it's a little bit offset so what we'll do just quickly recalibrate that undo slide it into the middle and then just uh, re-tighten those bolts bit rustic sorry apologies and then we'll just start that motor going so that's in the middle now I don't really think there's gonna to be too much slipping um, it's okay if that rotisserie is still pretty much finger tight now shut this lid so it doesn't get too out of control and what I've done is I've got my board here I've got all these lovely lovely juices um, the yogurt marinade that we've had this sitting in for like 24 hours. I've got, you know, pretty much the excess retained here. I'll scrape a bit more off that board and in the next sort of 10 to 15 minutes, I'm just gonna reapply that marinade and just with this spoon, just like ladle it over the top. We just wanna just get as much maximum flavor into this cook as possible. So yeah, um, yeah, we haven't really lost any temp there. That's gonna creep up straight away. All that extra oxygen from lifting the lid is just gonna, you know, crank the heat e even more. So, anyway, I'll, I'll check in about midway through the cook. So let's give it about half an hour, 40 minutes, and we'll, we'll check back in and see how it's going. Okay, let's just check in here for a minute. Oh man, I love that color. We'll just uh, pause the jotisserie for a sec. Check the internal temp. Okay, 122. Still got a fair way to go, but that's okay. That char is just going to develop. I'll get it going again. 
and uh, we've still got plenty of fuel down here it's no dramas in terms of finishing off this cook so let's just keep it going so we're getting towards the end of our cook here and we're sort of reaching the end of uh, our charcoal burn here but uh, if you have a look at that it's looking pretty good so just gonna turn off that rotisserie and we'll check our internal temp and yeah look 165 is what we're aiming for that's right in the guts so I'm gonna take this off and uh, we'll see you in a minute okay so we've got our chicken cook here taking it off I'm just gonna remove that and then it's pretty simple I'm just gonna take those thighs off um, they'll probably come off pretty much individually and then we're gonna further cut those up slice them up and um, get them into our wraps or salad or whatever we want but you can see they're well cooked and um, you know they're, they're super tender look at the way that that just falls apart that's the thing I love about the rotisserie it's such an even gentle cook you saw we didn't really take it much towards further than just you know our standard done, done temperature for chicken but you know that looks pretty good right there and um, I guess it just comes down to the taste test so you could leave it whole and serve it or you can slice it up like this this is gonna go so nicely into some wraps or whatever we really want to do with it I'm just gonna have a bite right now mmm nice and spicy super tender I love it that's beautiful now I'm gonna make a wrap okay so got all our ingredients here I'm gonna build this wrap um, start off with the chicken okay so this is the top end here it's gonna be our open end so we'll stack ingredients right to the top I like to put in you know some of those crispy bits because they have a lot of char, a lot of flavour. We'll chuck in a bit of cucumber, nice and cool, uh, offsets the spiciness of this dish. Tomato adds a fair bit of texture, texture and adds a fair bit of taste. Got a little bit of um, pickled red onion here from my auntie Sue, so shout out to her. That's just going to add a little bit of flavour, a little bit of sweetness. Speaking of sweetness, we've got a little bit of mango chutney here, which uh, I can never go past. Mango is such a great flavour and sweetness uh, to counteract the, the spiciness of this dish is um, quite fine. And then last but not least, a little bit of homemade um, mint sauce. It's fairly spicy, got some green chilies in there, but um, very tasty nonetheless. So we're just going to fold this up and uh, and that looks like a lovely little chicken tikka wrap and um, I'll see you in a sec for the taste test. So we got our chicken tikka wrap here. It's delicious. I've already had a few bites. Um, but the heat from the, the chicken, it's, it's nice and spicy. Uh, the mint sauce adds a little bit of heat as well, but it's counteracted by uh, the juiciness of the, the cucumber and the tomato. They really um, turn that heat down. And then we've got a bit of sweetness from the mango chutney and that sweet red onion pickle. So really good balance of flavors. Uh, I'm gonna put the recipe for the chicken tikka marinade in, in the comments and uh, you know, give this a crack it is so nice um, I've cooked it many times before but this is the first time I put it on video but um, enjoy anyway I'm gonna just have a little bite of this mm. Mm. That's, good. that's really good